Ms. Shana and I'm a children's librarian at the Long Beach Public Library. If you haven't signed up for our summer reading program, dig deeper, then go ahead and go to longbeach.beanstack.org so you can start earning prizes for the reading that you're already doing this summer. And if you are signed up, wonderful. Don't forget to earn credit for watching today's video by entering the code DINOSAUR into your activities tab on your Beanstack account. Today we're going to be doing a science experiment with frozen dinosaur eggs. I can't wait to get started. So here's what you'll need. You are going to need some dinosaurs. You can find these little tiny, tiny dinosaurs, sometimes at a dollar store or something like that. So you'll need some of these. You'll need a couple of balloons. Um, but if you don't have these handy, you could also just use a cereal bowl or um, any kind of container that'll hold water in your freezer. You'll need some warm water, so maybe um, about two cups of water microwave for about a minute and let it cool. You're gonna need some tools for excavating your dinosaurs out of their eggs. And if you'd like to try using a little bit of salt, we can see what kind of effect that'll have on the frozen eggs. And if you have like a little turkey baster or um, a little dropper like this, that's gonna help you put the warm water into the tray, which is the last item you'll need today. You'll need some kind of container that can hold melting ice um, and contain water. So let's begin. First, you're gonna need to take a dinosaur and put it inside of a balloon. If you have a helper, this is a little bit easier because they could hold the balloon open for you while you put the dinosaur in there. But I found that I can do it by myself if I put one, a couple of, like two fingers inside the balloon and then I take my little dinosaur and I'm gonna lay the dinosaur on the outside of the balloon and then I'm gonna pull the balloon inside out over that little dinosaur so he's tucked inside. And just keep pulling him through until it starts to resemble a balloon again. So we're turning that balloon sort of inside out. And it'll still work if it's turned inside out like that. So if you can get a helper to help you though, or a grown up, that might be useful. So I'll show you that again. Open up the balloon, put your fingers in there, take a dinosaur, put them on the outside of the balloon, and then pull the balloon over the dinosaur inside out. And be careful because those little tails are really sharp and you want to check your balloon for any holes before you try to fill it with water. Otherwise you might end up with a big mess. But science experiments are for being messy, right? Okay, this one doesn't want to go in as easily. That's okay. I think I got it. Okay, two. Two dinosaurs in a balloon. So the smaller the dinosaur, probably going to be the better. And if you don't want to deal with the balloons, you can just put a dinosaur into a container of water like that and just freeze the whole container of water. It won't look like an egg, but that's okay. Again, so we're going to stretch the balloon open. You know what? I'm just going to try dropping him in there because he's nice and tiny. So look, I was able to do it without turning it inside out. So once you have your dinosaurs in your balloons, you're gonna go fill them with water at a sink. Okay, so we're gonna fill up our balloons at a sink with a faucet like this. Just like you're filling up a water balloon, you're gonna put that over your faucet. Hold it tight. Put some water in there really slowly until it's about the right size to fit in the palm of your hand. Let out a little bit of the air and then just tie that balloon secure. Like that, and then you can toss it in the freezer overnight or for a few hours. You can make them a little bit bigger if you want. Let out the air, tie it up. Might need to have a grown-up help you with this part. I don't recommend having a water balloon fight with dinosaurs inside of those balloons. No way, that would be painful. All right. There we go. Last 
last one. So then you're gonna go ahead and put those in the freezer. Once you've pulled your frozen balloons out of the freezer and put them in a water safe container, it's now time to remove the balloon and start excavating our frozen dinosaur eggs. So, you can poke a little hole in the balloon, but you might just wanna grab some scissors and have a grown up help you. Cut the balloon away from the ice. It's gonna be very slippery and you don't wanna lose that dinosaur egg. carefully there you can see it there's a little dinosaur hiding in that frozen egg okay I'm gonna cut open my next dinosaur egg this one's a little bit smaller and look surprise I actually snuck some food coloring into this one so if you wanna make some different color eggs, just put a couple of drops of food coloring inside of your balloon before you fill it with water. And then there's our dinosaur. Can you see him in there? And let's see, I got one more here. So yeah, when you use balloons, you get this nice egg shape. And there we go. There's our last dinosaur. See him inside? So now it's time to figure out how are we gonna get them out of here? My hands are already getting a little bit wet from the water. They're already starting to melt a little bit. So here's where we can start experimenting. We can grab a chopstick and a little hammer here and maybe try to crack them open. Make sure you wear some safety goggles for this part. And if that becomes too tedious, you can try to start using some warm water. So I microwaved two cups for two minutes and it's hot, but it, it might be a little too hot for a young child, so make sure you let it cool. Um, but for an older child, this might be okay. Oh, this doesn't work that well. And just try spraying some hot water on there. and start watching the dinosaur melt away, right out of that egg. So, some of the questions you can be asking while you're doing this is which way is the fastest to excavate the dinosaur out of its egg? And it looks like that water is, look, it's putting some really nice divots into the ice there. And, one thing we didn't talk about was how dinosaurs are reptiles, which means they're oviparous. Oviparous means they come from an egg. So I can see a little foot sticking out here. And I might start chipping away again. be a fun activity to do maybe outside in the summertime if you don't want to get water everywhere and I think I'm having much more luck just using hot water so we can talk about how water is a liquid and when it is cold enough 33 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees centigrade, then it freezes and becomes a solid. And by using hot water on the ice, we're turning that back into liquid. So a little lesson on the different states of matter. And something else we can try to speed this along would be to use salt. So I have a little bowl of salt here. I'm gonna sprinkle some of that on my ice. And you know how we said water freezes at 33 degrees Fahrenheit? Well, 
when salt is added to water, it decreases freezing point. Might try using a fork. So as you can see, this is a fun way to spend a lot of time talking about how to get these dinosaurs out of here. And you could have a race and see who can rescue their dinosaur the fastest. Or you could, your experiment can be which material or which tool is the best for freeing the dinosaurs from their eggs. And I am gonna say that hot water is the best way. Cause look at how free that dinosaur is looking there. He's almost out. And maybe if I just give him a little bit of a nudge, nope, he's not ready yet. So we're gonna keep adding. I think the salt really did a good job there of making the ice melt faster. That's what I'm noticing is that the ice is melting faster when I put salt on there. Yeah, it just kind of like disappears. Look, right where the salt was. We're gonna get one of these dinosaurs free. Oh, there we go. Got it. Ah, yes. There we go. So, which material worked best or which tool worked best to free the dinosaur from the egg? Was it the hammer and chisel or chopstick? Was it warm water? Was it salt? It was kind of a combination of all three but I personally feel like the warm water did the best job and then combined with the salt, it was really fast melting that ice. So this is just a simple experiment you can do at home, hopefully with materials you just have laying around the house. Thanks for joining us today. Don't forget to sign up for summer reading at longbeach.beanstack.org and don't forget to enter today's code dinosaur into your activities tab. Thanks for watching, bye.